Sleeves here with the Senior Pickleball Report powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Today we speak with Jennifer Galwiz, who is a member of Naples JBB United from the newly formed National Pickleball League. She's also a physical therapist. We talk all things physical therapy and pickleball and a little bit of tennis as well. Okay, folks, before we get to that, Consider subscribing to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Check out all the discount links in the description for different paddles and shoes. And subscribe to our newsletter for your daily updates on the Pickleball universe. All right, let's get to that chat with Jen. Jen Gawis from JBB United, the New Uniform National Pickleball League. Welcome, finally, to the Senior Pickleball Report. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it took us a while to, to connect, but it's going to be worth it because, obviously, there's a lot of exciting things happening in pickleball and with you. Um, we'll get to what you do for a living, and we'll get to, obviously, JBB United and NPL, which has been an amazing season so far. But first and foremost, uh, we always start with how the silly wiffle ball game entered your life and it's taken over part of it. So start us off there if you would. Oh my goodness. Like so many, I came from a tennis background. I played tennis in college. That's okay. actually what brought me from Idaho to Chicago was tennis. And oh, okay. Um, I resisted because I played competitive, you know, tennis until yeah. two years ago, to be honest. This was the okay. last first year. I'm not playing tennis any longer, but um, on a girl's trip to Cabo and she kept saying, oh, we got to play pickle and they had these nice courts and there was a tournament and she signed us up. And after two days of playing and that's all we did, we, we didn't do the golf, we didn't do that. You know, there were eight of us and we just played the entire time. And it was, it was so much fun. It was a quick, such a quick learning curve, yeah. for all different levels of, of us. And then um, fast forward, I went to spring break just by chance to Naples with the family <laughs> and, um, somebody just told me about the facility, you know, the yeah. beautiful, beautiful facility. And um, I actually went there. I didn't even have a paddle. I'd only played those few times at Babo. And I met Bob Stroman at the park, borrowed his paddle. He said, just use it for the week, kid, and get it back to me. Um, Sounds right. <laughs> I went, <laughs> exactly. And I went, my, you know, my teenagers ignore me at the beach. So I went there every day for four days in a row, just played in and had a blast. I think I came back and I was, I was all in from then on. So it yeah, was that's a chance meeting and a wonderful meeting to, you know, run into him and get really get me started on, you know. This yeah. And, and little did you know, obviously <laughs> I know. what was, what was coming down the pike. I mean, if, if, if somebody would have told you at that point, you know, not too long ago when you were into tennis and this game came into your life that you would be playing in a professional league uh, in a short period, yeah. um, what you probably would have thought they were nuts, right? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't have given up tennis because I would have, you know, I was that tennis was, you know, yeah, superior, you know, or better or harder or whatever. Sure. You know? And I would, I would think, I mean, I played a little bit of tennis, you know, I was like any, any Joe that had a tennis racket in his garage would play every so often with their friends, but yeah. and you played high level tennis. So maybe talk a little bit about that because the entry level is easier. I, no doubt. I mean, you know, controlling a tennis ball, is much more difficult than controlling a pickleball in many regards. But pickleball is, um, you know, a game, mainly a doubles game, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of, and you find out this very quickly when you run into people, there's a lot of things and nuance that you don't know, and you can look really silly really fast, even though you might have an extensive paddle or racket background. So talk about the transition for you and what was, what was easy and what was difficult. Okay, well, yeah playing tennis my whole life. And, mm -hmm. you know, I basically started pickle that Naples trip was 2021. So I'm, you know, relatively yeah. about two, two and a half years into pickle. Um, and I did like most tennis players, I was kind of known for playing tennis. Ripping the ball. Court. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at Naples, they said, you know what a third shot drop is? I said, a what? You know, Bob yeah. still, he still likes to tease me. He says, I cannot spell drop, but I can, <laughs> you know, I wanted to evolve. So right. uh, what worked last year, you know, and, four or five, five O tournaments, whatever, is not going to work at this right. level now. So obviously you have to adapt and, you know, that hard game works only so much. So it yeah. is been so much fun to, you know, the game was kind of easy at first to get to here and sure. then better players. 
And I love that there, there's eddies, there's ATPs, there's stacking, reverse stacking. There's, you know, I, the points that go so go really long. Yeah. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting for their, them to make a mistake or to put the ball up. That's what it, that's, it's, this sports gets more and more fun to me. So at right. first it was just with friends and my kids and, and then you'd start to find better games. I'm like, oh, this is really, there's more to this. Right. It's just exciting. Cause I didn't want to, oh, okay. Yeah, this is, this is where it at. There's like the ceiling is high and there's the, the more the strategy comes in and the level gets higher. The game gets more fun to me. Absolutely. So I, just, I just, you know, to be honest with tennis, I still love tennis, but you know, I'm kind of, I was getting worse at tennis, you know, when you play high level, sure. and, you yeah. know, and it's harder to find. <laughs> similar players, you know, with the yeah. leagues, I was traveling downtown Chicago in the suburbs and pickle, you can just like, I'm bored. I just show up at a park. I don't even right. care. What, you know, I'll, I'll go work on something. I'll just work on my short game or serve backhands the whole time. And just from 15 years old to 17, we have a park, you just show up. Yeah. So like yeah. kids, you have, you know, all ages, it's extremely inclusive. I yeah. think people can learn pretty quickly where n- none of my friends play tennis with me. So tennis right. is like, just did by myself, come home. I didn't hang out after you know, yeah. matches, you know, USTA and NITTL and that, but pickle has been, it's like this whole new group of friends. I helped this country club open last night and the four of us had a pro exhibition match. It was, oh, cool. it was so fun. It was a 29. So two young pros, I call them were playing mm-hmm. with me and, you know, and, but you know, a 30 year old. Yeah. That's what's movie. great about the game. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. So I just, I feel like it's very inclusive. It's extremely social. It's just been, a, it's been so much fun. I'm just, I really love it. So. Yeah. And I think that's what I I'm gleaning off most people that I talk to is not only is it fun, but they're sort of super grateful for this new experience to come into their life. And it yeah. sort of rejuvenates their, their athletic world. And obviously, like you mentioned, you get introduced to countless numbers of people that you would have never really run into. And you have this whole new community of friends mm-hmm. almost instantly <laughs> or yeah. in a very short time. So, oh, and then God. obviously you, you come into, um, the league, like the National Pickleball League, NPL, and that expands a couple of things for you. Um, obviously, you know, players that enter this league are probably all learning as they go the, the deficiencies in their own game, um, because obviously they're playing with teammates and then they're playing against, you know, competitors on other teams. Right. And then at the end of the day, also, you're hanging out. So talk yeah. a little bit about your NPL experience so far. Well, so I mean, I heard about this in the fall or the, back in the winter when they were having this combine tryout. So I was, you know, lucky to go to that. It was so you so, went to the combine. Okay. I right went on. To the combine, yes. Yeah. And I had a couple of friends that, you know, encouraged me to go. And, you know, I really, I don't know if I was going to have a chance, but I thought, you know what? It's three days of pickle. Yeah. Was, for my spring break, I asked, you know, I only have one child left in high school. And I said, you know, I'm going to come late to spring break. They said, my daughter's like, if you have a chance to compete in that mom, go do it and have fun. And yeah. everyone was so nice. Whether you, I made it to the, you know, I wanted to go try to win it. So I had a spot. Sure. It didn't happen, but literally made friends to exchange numbers. Somebody was texting me the next month to play, you know, us open with her. And everyone was in just a really good mood and happy, whether they were going to, you know, win it or what that meant for the right. Draft. That three day combine was a blast. Yeah. You know, it was well run and it made me excited about the league. Like this is really going to be a well, a well-run league. There's people that are excited. They're putting a lot of, you know, time and energy that, you know, the three yeah. Beth, Rick and Michael have been amazing. It is right. so fun. And then to be invited to the live draft in Naples, you know, they don't, you don't know if you're going to be drafted and there yeah. are people there, even at my table that we're not. And so I'm like, well, you have nothing to lose, you know, might as well go. Right. And if you don't, if you do great, but it was really fun. I was so excited. Yeah. I mean, you're at a <laughs> combine, you which part is, of something. Right. Right. I mean, the combine is historic enough, obviously, you know, there's a yeah. combine for people that are 50 plus to play at a pro level. And then I feel like it's sort of like, you know, college football, you're at this NFL draft and you're sitting around <laughs> waiting for your name to get called. Yeah. So you can go up there with your Jersey and put the hat on and be, you know, JBB United talk about just sitting there and waiting sort of like, you know, am I going to get drafted? Did you have an inkling? I mean, you know, did Bob give you a hint that he draft you. No, he wouldn't, you know, I will say that I, I think I played well at mm-hmm. the combine. I think I was, you know, did enough, but you, I yeah. just, I never, ever, I'm always, you know, and until sure. you know where I want to get overconfident because I don't know all the people that weren't, there were lots of people that weren't at the combine that are rated right. much higher. You know, I think my rating was just under a five at the time. And I thought, you know, if you're, if you don't have that over five, Oh, yeah. I'm really a nobody. I had no ranking. You know, I've only played, I had just turned, I'm like barely 50. So yeah. I just started playing senior pro this year. I was playing, you know, more, 
you know, the five O tournaments and I only sure. played about three tournaments. So I was so new. So I didn't expect anything. So it's great yeah. if it happens, but if not, I'll just go back and work harder. And yeah, but it was kind of funny. So I have a couple of friends there and um, you're kind of nervous. So my, my friend and partner, David George, yeah. I said, you know, I hope I, you know, I think Bob's going to, I don't know, but this other team talked to me Two other, you know, some of the people talk to you at the combine. So yeah. I, and I go, I think this team, I might, I might, this, I have a chance on this one. He said, I think not. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> so they explained that the first pick was the first person and then they were going to go alphabetical order. So you didn't oh, know. Oh, right. Exactly. So number one pick, you know, John Sperling, and then the rest are just in alphabetical order. Yeah. But probably Naples going. So there've been three teams that have gone and I'm sitting there like, you know, there are only three left. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, a little nerd. Bob hadn't gone yet, but. He goes, I think not. I'm like, why? He goes, they're on S. Your last name is G. I'm like, oh, you know, there's another team. So then Bob right. was next and he was so cute because he said, well, this one. And he started talking about how he met. And, and then I'm like, yay. So it was, yeah. it, was really fun. it was just, it was just a really fun party. And just to, to see something that you really want to, and then to now know that you're going to be included in this league and have all this, these future dates to travel and yeah. meet all these awesome players that I've heard about and get to play with and against. Right. It was super exciting. So, I yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about so far. Obviously, you have um, one normal regular season event left, we'll call it. And then obviously yeah. the championship coming up. What if, what are your thoughts so far? I mean, has, has the league met expectations? Obviously, it's they're treating you well. They're treating you like professionals. Yes, yeah. um, it, I've been to one event. I, you know, I was at the Kansas City event and, you know, there's people walking around asking if you need anything. Uh, everybody's cheering, you know, team breakers happen. It's like a little stadium thing happens and everybody's <laughs> are gathering around it. So obviously the, the enthusiasm is there and that level of play is really phenomenal, but you know, there's obviously we have expectations and then the reality happens. How about you so far experiencing the league play? Um, is it met expectations, exceeded expectations? Is it different than you thought? What are your thoughts on that so far? So, gosh, well, when it comes to my team, for mm -hmm. sure has exceeded expectations. Yeah. Um, beyond just the talent of play, I'm, I mean, there's nine females. That I've never, like this group get, gets along so well. Yeah. We have the funniest text chains. We are <laughs> constantly making jokes. And like we have already, we care about each other so much. So I really yeah. do feel like there's not a lot of ego. And if right. we say, Jen, will you play this pot or this pot or... I'll play with anybody. I'll play yeah. the pod. We we don't have any of that. I mean, of course you want to win, but like even sure. the top, you know, but we're so lucky to have Bob Stroman and Jen McCore coaching us. Yeah. They're, they're just class acts. And yeah, we want to win, but not above any drama or anything. Right. That, so literally like pod one players are saying, I'll play pod two, or you can, let's move things around to try different combinations as we, because as we go into the, you know, the big final thing is the when we right. Try figure things out. We've had times where John wasn't there or, you know, play, I wasn't the last one we've had, you know, always right. a few people missing. So sure. We're very fluid and we're very flexible. So as far as the actual team, I love our team. Like we're going to be friends yeah. for life. These, yeah. That's these awesome. awesome. And that's and the most like, important part. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, just like yeah. to have all these new friends and now yeah. future tournaments, like texting each other, do you want to play Chicago open? Do you want to play this? So right, right. that's been awesome. But um, the level play has been really fun. Great yeah. matches. Um, it's fun to play with new partners and against, you know, people that, you know, cause when you play in the APP or those, you sit, like we went to Cincinnati, it rained yeah. a couple of times and then now you're in the loser bracket and then you're, you're waiting around and rain delays. Right, right. I went back to my hotel by myself, you know, and yeah. then you try to find someone to go have dinner with, but this NPL culture is almost like being back in college. We all are hanging out. Like we go to the, sometimes we go to the pool after or we, we go 80s to 80s parties. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the 80s party was so much fun. But we have every Bob is just he we, he's been so generous and, and this team unity. I mean, picture yeah. the airport, we go to every meal together. And yeah. so it's been really it's been so much fun. It's the most fun I've had in a long, long time. And it's just right on. You feel young and you feel like it's to compete again. And you know, yeah. I'm, I'm two in college now and one see a daughter is a senior. And so it's kind of yeah. like, feels like your time again to do something sure. just for you, you know, so right. it's always about my kids' sports and yeah. I mean, obviously the, the fun factors there, I follow, you know, a ton of players on, in this league on social media, and you can tell that this community is really tight. And you can tell they they have 
the priority straight. So, you know, I watch a lot of pro pickleball, you know, APP, PPA, MLP. But um, the thing I notice is there seems to be a different attitude. And that's because obviously a lot of you, you know, all of you have lived your lives to a great extent and you've done things, you've had experiences, you've run businesses, you've had jobs, you have a huge talent pool of people to draw from as far as how to create and how to maintain things. Yeah. Um, and you've really taken control of your own destiny. Um, you're not, you know, and you've made your living, so to speak. So this is sort of the frosting on the cake. And it's really cool to see people yeah. really enjoying each other's company mm -hmm. and hanging out. But you know, I'll make no mistake, you know, I've said this in every interview. If you go watch this live, it's some serious pickleball. Like there's no joke. Like people are competing hard and the level is very, very high. I don't care what pod you're playing. Um, yeah, it's wow. good. It, it is. It's good ball. Yeah. It is so fun. Yeah, it is. You paddle company, Pickle, PCKL, great paddle line, great price points. Anything you want from starter paddle to intermediate to a pro series high level paddle, check them out. Get 15% off using my discount code. Pickle, it's the future. Are you looking to stay up to date on the latest pickleball news and tips? Look no further than the Sleeve Senior Pickleball Report newsletter. Get the scoop on the sport, learn how to stay healthy while playing, and find out about upcoming tournaments. Subscribe now to get all the pickleball info you need. Yeah, so let's shift a little bit. Um, you're a physical therapist. I am, uh-huh. And this sport, um, you know, you, as I've heard some, some people call it, for people who are getting injured, it's, it's the new CrossFit um, of people kind of oh, showing up to, no, no, no. <laughs> to the ER or whatever. Now I played, I played for it's this month years and um, I've really only dealt with one issue and that's lower back pain. Okay. Um, and, and, and again, that's not necessarily from pickleball. I've had that throughout the years. I'm starting to do some yoga now, which has made a, a, a huge difference in only the three weeks I've been doing it. Yeah. Um, but, but talk about um, not only what you're doing, but like how you, I guess, implement that in your own life, in your own playing, because, you know, you'll see an entire league of people here and, you know, people get aches and pains and things like that. Is it something that you're, you, you can offer up advice? Do you, and what, what do you see going on out there? So I work for Athletico, which is a big sports provider. And I'm actually mm -hmm. in a mid, my, my clinic's location is inside a midtown tennis club. So okay. we, they have pickleball courts there. So I yeah. literally have, I have patients of all ages and you know, sure. multiple orthopedics, but I've getting, I'm getting a lot of, you know, pickleball players and tennis players. It is mostly knees, low back and tennis elbow. I would say those okay. are the three, the three biggest. And even myself, I've had a little bit of a knee issue, um, sure. with a little bit meniscal, but you know, all this, these articles about more injury. Well, these people I would argue are more active than they've ever been. Yeah. They're having fun. They're, they're, so the benefit always the risk. Absolutely. Yeah, for they're, sure. they, no, and you're, when they get word addicted, people don't play tennis every single day. I never did. Yeah. This, I'll play pickle in the morning. And then someone calls you to play night. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, tomorrow. I mean, you know, yeah. and so it's getting people out there. So mental aspect to have friends, have something to do. You know, I yeah. have a set. She go, you know, she's trying to play and, you know, you do have to fit in the extra stuff. So even I was yeah. guilty of playing every day and no right. longer hitting the gym and doing the weights. So mm -hmm. you probably, you know, you do need to think about like with your knees, you need to get your quads, your glutes, your core strength. Yeah. Your back. The, the, the difference, biggest difference in tennis and pickle is that reaching in. So oh, yeah. tennis, we close the net. You don't have to wait. So right. you close the net. So you're not leaning. So tall people, especially I think with their backs, yeah. are leaning to get that shot you know, because of that, the nature of the game. So they're right. having back issues. Well, then they should go after their core, their butt, their hips. Other yeah. people are bending a lot, their knees, but they don't have the strength. A lot of, the, you know, a lot of it's just repetitive overuse. Sure. But getting muscles higher, getting your quads, your glutes, your hips. So spend maybe three days a week playing pickle and then three days a week really doing strengthening, not even cardio, strengthening, yeah. you know, those muscles. So we right. incorporate that a lot in, you know, our clinics, preventative, you know, prevent, protect, and then you know, rehab. So if you are right. injured, wear like a knee brace or we're going to, you know, strengthen targeted muscles to get you back out there. So right. yeah, this is a 50 over community in the NPL, mm -hmm. but it's all ages, you know, Oh, for sure. Sport. But yeah, it's, but it's not, you know, other sports have all kinds of injuries. You just, 
it's getting a lot of press. It's super popular and sure. people are playing a lot more often than they do their other sports. So right. it just yeah. increases. Those, those are excellent points. I mean, you're yeah. right. You know, we, it, it is the new shiny object, so to speak, in yeah. at least the States. And so it gets a lot of attention, you know, with the conflict between, you know, tennis courts and, and pickleball courts and players and obviously injuries and things like that. But going back to NPL a little bit, um, does NPL have something like where, you know, you between matches, you can go stretch out or you oh, yeah. can yep. get a massage or whatever it happens to be. No, they've done a great job. They, every single um, weekend, there's a sponsor of a chiropractor, a uh, stretch, yeah. you know, the stretch places yeah. and right. PT on staff. One of the owners is an orthopedic surgeon, you know, so there's right. always an area to go stretch before inside. They're doing a great job with that. So yeah, right on. Yeah. yeah they're, they're taking care of their folks because, you know, that's got to maintain the league. Um, when winding up here, let's talk about, um, I guess, expectations for the future of um, NPL and your, in your role in it. Um, what do you see coming down the pike? I'm not asking you to like, you know, give any inside secrets or anything like <laughs> that, but like, where do you see this league going over the next few years? Oh my goodness. Um, well, personally, I remember I told Bob the other day, I hope we don't wait till this time next year to do it again. You know, it's like when the right. season the show gets over and you're like, you have to wait a year. <laughs> right. You know, all have to, I mean, I'm going to have to go back in the draft. I think that they'll, I think the teams can protect like one or two players, but that'll be like the number ones or whatever. Yeah, so sure. most of us will go back in. I have mm -hmm. a lot of 49 year old friends that cannot wait. To I'm come sure. In next year. I'm like, ah. You know, I was never so happy to turn 50 in my life. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, wait, I'm so glad I'm not 48 two years away. Right. Um, but I, I, there's going to be more teams coming in. I know that they mentioned sure. that even that week of the draft, like, there were like all these other teams that we want, we want in and to, you know, the credit of, you know, Michael and Rick, yeah. and Beth, they were like, we want to do this, right. You know, you do something yeah. smaller and you right. really do it well instead of just, so I know yeah. there's going to be no more teams next year. I don't have a number. I don't know what, yeah. what that looks like. I imagine it'll be more teams and maybe not as many players on each team. Right. I've heard that as well. Yeah. How are you yeah. going to have that? You can't have four pods and 10 teams, but, right. um, which is, change the dynamic but again it, it'll it could be my, my smaller tire unit i think yeah. i hope that they go with it quicker you know of course yeah. we're going to be done in october probably take a few months off to do it again but we want it again like i could see like yeah okay, there'll be another combine or two and there'll January, be a draft i'm assuming start this yeah. in february because <laughs> you want to get back to see like it's like our summer break and you want to get back to college you know right right you see all your yeah. friends again and it's just you know so i'm really hoping that you know i did enough this year and to be drafted yeah. again next year and who knows if that hopefully you stay on the same team, but if you don't, you know, so it's yeah. just, they've done such a good job. And, you know, and especially I like, speak of my owner and, and all the other owners, you talk to everybody. We all know. Yeah. You know, we all sit and chit chat, even after matches, everyone wishes each other. Well, even if you lost 11, 10 in the third and right. You know, so yeah. And, and that's the thing. I, it's truly, it's grateful to be part of this experience. I'm grateful. Right. And, and I think it, that's all the way down from um, players to and, and up to ownership. Uh, you know, I've interviewed at least one person on every ownership team and it's, you can tell it's everybody is just so jacked to be involved in this. And they all, you know, when I was in Kansas city, you know, I didn't feel sort of any division or, you know, people rooting for their teams, but you know, people were just happy to be there and having a really good time and competing really hard and, you know, promoting NPL um, along with their team. I, I think they see, everybody seems to see the bigger picture of like this league um, is set a very high bar. And I would argue that coming out of the gates, um, th this league's doing things that the other professional leagues that, you know, the open pro leagues are not doing. First of all, I've mentioned this before. They show every match. You can watch every match. That's amazing. Uh, I can't believe it. On yeah, YouTube. That's, that's an incredible thing. And um, I think the thing that I've noticed the most is that everybody feels like they're treated as a professional and they're treated the same. And I can't, you can't say that for, for every league that's going on right now. And, and MPL has done a really good job, like you've mentioned, being very inclusive and very welcoming to, to everyone and making oh, them feel much. like they're part of something bigger than just themselves their team but this league in general and pickleball as a sport because you, you know whether we people you know people like it or not professionals on some level are representing this game mm -hmm. um on a higher yeah. level because they're getting the exposure and they're getting they're on tv and they're on the media and i 
I'd love to see the NPL, you know, be on a larger platform because I think the ball is so good. And I think a lot of, a lot of people in leagues could learn from NPL because they've set the bar so high right out of the gate. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. It would be pretty cool. So to get you out of here, let's talk about um, some folks you'd like to, to, you know, maybe mention, give a shout out to, because obviously none of us do this on our own. You know, people make sacrifices, there's sponsorships sometimes. Anybody you'd like to uh, give a, a shout out to that, you know, made this possible for you, whether it's fen- friends, family, or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, a couple mm-hmm. of things. I mentioned um, the three founders, but I want to met- mention Julie Weston as well, because yeah. that girl is working her tail off and yeah. always is smiling and is so lovely and kind and super and, nice. And I parties yeah. On Friday from the themes from the eighties to the gift bags, they're spoiling us and making yeah. it really fun. So she, they're all, all the people involved are just, thank you so much. Cause they're doing a great yeah. job. Um, obviously I mentioned my amazing owner, Bob Stroman and Jennifer yeah. Core, who gives such valuable Hall of Famer. Her coaching <laughs> advice. She's like, give me the chance. I want you thinking. Give me you know, their little tips. Yeah. They help a lot. Oh, so, I'm sure. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. So I listen. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for her, for her help. Um, obviously, I have an awesome husband, Rick, and I have three kids, Jack, Audrey, Paige, two, and yeah. one's at Illinois, one's at the University of Kentucky. And then I've got a daughter that's a senior. So you know, they make jokes that when I started playing pickle, there was no longer food in the fridge. And <laughs> you know, I never picked yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true, you know, but you know, she, she can drive herself. She's 60. You know, that's that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just been really, I mean, as far as sponsorships and things, there's some things athletic has been great to me and all the sponsors of the league have been amazing, but yeah. um, I got, and then it's just for fun. We're just like, I'm, now I get to, I'm, I'm running a couple of like clinics. Oh, you can right have on. actually, you, you yeah. interviewed David George. So I we, did play outside of the league we're on the same team just by chance right we play you know the pph stuff together like yeah Chicago and cincy and we did beer city recently we've been playing together for about a year and a half um so we're doing clinics that are called he's a professor and i'm a pt they're uh, called the pt and the professor oh i like it he wants thinks they should be called the professor and the pt so <laughs> maybe you can weigh in because you have so much experience <laughs> so i'm older by about yeah. a while, <laughs> and yeah so I said, Dave, I'll ask Sleaze what he thinks. <laughs> I, I actually like the PT and professor a little better. I think it rolls, up, it rolls off the tongue a little better. It well, does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's a great idea. And again, anything that, you know, you, you want to, 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 to send me, put, we'll have all these uh, links in the description, how to get, okay. you know, to, to find uh, Jen and, and, and if she's running some clinics, hopefully, and get so, so folks can come up and show up for those things. Um, Thanks for your time. I appreciate oh, it. So and I look forward to meeting you in person um, in Glendale at the championship. Oh, and uh, go uh, JBB United. And hey, enjoy the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, hey, let's pickle. As I, and I want to thank you for your support. Thank you for having me on. And sure. for your support of in your pickle and the NPL. And I really look forward to meeting you at the, that final right week. It's going to be so much fun. Oh my God. <laughs> it's going to be out of hand. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks to Jennifer for her time. Great information and always fun to speak with somebody with that kind of enthusiasm for the game and life in general. Okay, folks, remember at the end of the day, hey, <laughs> let's pickle. Hey, if you're looking for very, very comfortable court shoes, in fact, the most comfortable court shoes I've ever worn, and I've worn a lot of them over the years playing different sports, try Fitville. We have a link in the description that gets you 20 bucks off your purchase.